Welcome to the One God Report. Bill Schlegel here. The title of this episode is Biblical Proof That Jesus Is Not God. Oh, hang on a second. If you were a Trinitarian like I was for many years, you've probably only heard biblical proofs that Jesus is God. So, is there really evidence or proof in the Bible that Jesus is not God? Well, there is a book recently published in paperback edition written by author Kermit Zarley. The title is The Restitution, Biblical Proof That Jesus Is Not God. Anyone who thinks that the Bible claims that God is a trinity or that the Bible claims that Jesus Christ is God should read this book. This book is a comprehensive study of biblical Christology. What does the Bible say about who Christ, Messiah, is? For some 1,700 years, Christian churches have answered that question by saying that Jesus is God or a God-man. Author Kermit Zarley challenges that answer. He maintains that the biblical view is not God is Christ, but God is. In Christ. That is, the one God of the Bible, his name is spelled in Hebrew with four consonants, Yud He Vav He, the one God of the Bible worked in and through his human Messiah, Jesus, to reveal himself to mankind and to reconcile the world to himself. Now, Kermit Zarley is a theologian and writer and a retired professional golfer. In 1965, he co-founded the PGA Tour Bible Study Group, which continues to this day. Now he is an author and theological blogger. I'll put a link, of course, to his webpage and to the Amazon link for this book. I will also put in a link to a video of the 1972 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, where Zarley, in the last round was tied with Jack Nicholas for the lead. Kind of fun to see. You can also hear Kermit on the One God Report podcast, episode number 37, where he talks about the phrase in the Gospel of John, I came down from heaven. And he discusses other metaphors in the Gospel of John and if Jesus literally pre-existed. That's podcast number 37. But back to this book. The book was originally published in 2008 under the title, The Restitution of Jesus Christ. But now, Kermit has made it available in a nice paperback format. I'm really excited about this. This book is right up there with Keegan Chandler's book and some of Anthony Buzzard's books. It's a scholarly book. You're not going to read it in one sitting, but it covers all the bases, so to say. In the first part of the book, Zarli reviews the historical development of deity of Christ and Trinitarian theology. The standard church narrative runs something like this. Beginning in New Testament times, and then for hundreds of years, Christians believe that Jesus is God and that God is a trinity. Only in the third and fourth centuries did people begin suggesting that Jesus isn't God, and the church rightly condemned such heretical views. Unquote. With careful research, Zarli shows that narrative to be false. Then, the main part of the book is a step-by-step, well-researched study of biblical Christology. Who is Jesus from the biblical perspective? First is Messianism in the Old Testament. How does the Old Testament view the Messiah? And here Zarli examines traditional Christianity's claims of finding evidence for the Trinity or the deity of Messiah in the Old Testament. Nobody in the New Testament, Jesus or the apostles, ever went back into the Old Testament to find the Trinity or the deity of Messiah. But Zarli considers things like the plural of Elohim. Does that mean God is more than one person? The appearances of the angel of the Lord, a claim to be pre-incarnate appearances of Jesus. And passages like Genesis 1.26 and Isaiah 7.14 and Isaiah 9, 6 are among those considered. Then, Christology, who is Jesus in the New Testament, beginning with the Synoptic Gospels, 
Matthew, Mark, and Luke. How do they present Jesus? What is the real answer to Jesus' question addressed to his disciples when he asked, Who do you say that I am? What did Peter mean when he said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God? Does that mean Jesus is God? And then so-called problem passages from the Synoptic Gospels, which traditional Christianity has claimed show the deity of Christ or the Trinity, like Matthew 28, 19. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Does this declare that God is three persons in one being? Zarli investigates these passages. A major part of the restitution is dedicated to a study of the Christology of the Gospel of John, since this New Testament book is considered by traditional Christianity to most clearly show the deity of Jesus. Therefore, Zarli considers his own analysis of John the most significant part of the book. John's prologue, the first 18 verses, is considered Jesus making himself equal with God, John 5, 18 and 19, and before Abraham was, or before Abraham comes to be, I am, John 8, 58. I and the Father are one, John 10, 30. My Lord and my God, Thomas' statement in John 20, 28. And other passages, including a number from John's epistles, are examined and shown to be understood better as God in Christ, not God is Christ. Consistent with the Synoptic Gospels, John presents Jesus as God the Father's chief agent or representative through whom God the Father is working. Let me quote a passage from the book. Zarli says, quote, Actually, the foremost Christological motif in the fourth gospel is not incarnation Christology, but agent Christology. John informs us no less than 40 times that the Father sent Jesus or did send him as his agent. Some have labeled this concept a sending Christology. Jesus claims similarly that he came or did come from the Father. The picture which John presents is of Jesus as the Father's agent. Jesus is God's agent because he acts on behalf of God and because God is present in him. Unquote. Ah, yes, indeed. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says the only true God is the Father, and that when you see Jesus, you see the Father, and that Jesus' words are not his own words, but the Father's words, and that the Father who dwells in him does his works. This is not incarnation, the idea of God taking on flesh or becoming a human. Rather, it's God at work in Christ. God is represented by the man, his Messiah, Christ Jesus. Now, like I said, this is not a book that you're going to sit down and read from cover to cover in one sitting. It's a great reference book. It's a great work to go through step by step because Zarley's analysis is very organized. And he's familiar with the scholarly literature. And in many cases, he's able to show how even Trinitarian scholars agree with his presentation. Some of it you may not agree with. I agree to a great degree on Zarli's presentation of biblical Christology. However, I disagree with him on his interpretation of the first few verses of John chapter 1. I don't believe that John chapter 1, in the beginning, is describing directly the Genesis creation. Rather, John chapter 1 is introducing a new beginning, which God is bringing about through the man Christ Jesus, who is metaphorically called the Word. So, my Trinitarian friends, do that. Read this book. You've never even heard these arguments. If you are a Trinitarian listening to this, read this book. See if he's right. You can agree. You can disagree. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of the truth. Perhaps there's something here that will strike you as correct from a biblical perspective, that indeed the Bible is presenting not God is Christ, but God in Christ. 
don't get me wrong, on the one hand, the book is a scholarly work. It's well documented with hundreds of footnotes. On the other hand, it's very readable and accessible to the lay reader. Zarli continues in his book with a thorough analysis of the Apostle Paul's Christology. Who is Jesus according to the Apostle Paul? Zarli shows that to the Apostle Paul, the Father is exclusively God. As for us, there is one God, the Father. I'll just note too, in the kind of modern movement to say that since you call Jesus Lord, that means he's God. And some people want to even say that means he's Yudhe the God of Israel, the Lord. Here's what Zarli writes. Paul, unlike other New Testament writers, applies the title Lord exclusively to Jesus in his corpus and thus never to the Father. This pattern can be quickly gleaned from all ten Pauline verses mentioned above in the section entitled The God of Jesus Christ. For Paul, God is the Father, and Jesus Christ is the Lord exclusively. Zarli quotes James Dunn, who says this, The word Lord in Paul's writings, kurios in Greek, is not so much a way of identifying Jesus with God, but if anything, more of a way of distinguishing Jesus from God, unquote. We can see that for Paul, God is not the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus is not God. God is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. God raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. It's interesting how Trinitarians have twisted the title Lord to mean something that is totally opposite and different from what the Apostle Paul intends it to mean. And then, of course, Zarli looks at the so-called problem passages, Philippians chapter 2, Oh, don't get me started on the deity of Christ interpretation of Philippians chapter 2. They don't realize how much they dishonor the man Christ Jesus with their interpretation of Philippians 2. If the pre-incarnate God humbled himself before he became a man, then Philippians chapter 2 is not about the man Christ Jesus humbling himself when he lived in Israel. The deity of Christ interpretation tries to rob the man Christ Jesus of who he is and what he did. Then, Zarli continues with the so-called problem passages in Paul. Colossians 1.19 and 2.9, the fullness of God dwelt bodily in Jesus. Titus 2.13, Romans 9.5. I heard Sean Finnegan on a recent podcast say, Every time he hears somebody say that John 10.30 is evidence that Jesus is God makes him want to fall off his chair and chuckle. For me, it's Romans 9.5. I mean, honestly, when I was a Trinitarian, I didn't know about Romans 9.5. And the first time I heard a Trinitarian tell me that Romans 9.5 is evidence that Jesus is God, and I'm thinking, really? Romans 9.5. One verse actually just a part of one verse in the whole book of Romans, where all you do is you change the punctuation, which the Greek didn't have. You put in a period or you you move the comma a bit. One verse in the book of Romans where Paul writes about all kinds of different topics. And we're supposed to understand that he claimed Jesus was God from this one verse that all you do is put in a period and you have a totally different understanding? Come on, it shows the desperation of the deity of Christ's claims when they point to Romans 9.5 as an evidence that Jesus is God. Not to mention, if you want to claim that Jesus Christ was the God over all from Romans 9.5, you are eliminating the Father. You're slighting the Father. Is not God the Father God over all, or in your view, is not the Trinity God over all? And then Zarli continues with the examination of the Christology of the book of Hebrews and Peter's epistles, and then the book of Revelation. So for people like me 
who believe, like Jesus said, that the only true God is the Father and that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Christ whom God has sent, this book does a good job of systematically giving biblical evidence for why we believe what we do believe and of showing that in the Bible, Jesus is not God. For Trinitarians, this book should be a challenge. You should read this book to understand your own positions, own view of who Jesus is. You really need to be able to read a book like this, have your views challenged a little bit. It should strengthen you, if nothing else. Also, for those who get the book, give it a rating and review on Amazon. Let me just say thanks to Kermit Zarley for putting this book together, all the effort that it took, and for now making it available in this paperback edition. Thanks so much. And then, let me mention that next weekend, April 21 to 23 of 2023, at Cornerstone Church in Gatesville, Texas, it's between Austin and Dallas-Fort Worth area, there is a Bible conference where Kermit Zarley will be giving lectures, and other presenters include Keegan Chandler, Kevin George, and a few other people. It's totally free. The announcement says we expect a fun and profitable time of Bible study fellowship, meals provided. You can see the link for this conference in the show notes. If you're anywhere near Gatesville, Texas this weekend, you should go. I wish I could come to this. I'll be in Israel. So I'm not going to be able to make it, but wow. Yishma'u anavim v'yishma'u. The humble will hear and rejoice.